Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make your very own Chinese takeaway restaurant for all of your city building needs. If you enjoyed this tutorial please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very very much but more importantly if you can try and watch the video all the way to the end or as much of it as possible as that helps me out loads and loads too. But without any further ado, let's get started. This is the amount of space required to make your build a 12 by 12 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground which I would more than recommend making if you are planning out a city or a world, it'll just help you out. Here are all of the materials that you will need to make your build, please do make sure that you have access to all these materials and enough of them as well. And now that we have all of our stuff, we can get started. Step 1, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid, if you've made it, and count backwards, one, two. This is where we're going to start things off. Place a brick on the ground. To the right of it, another brick. Destroy two blocks in the ground going right, and replace them with chiseled quartz block. Place birch doors on top of those, and then continue a row of eight bricks extending right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Extend that 8th blockwards, backwards, by 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Extend across the back, and then extend forwards. So the end result of this should be a very simple, boom, rectangle. We're going to destroy the floor of the rectangle whilst it is still easy. And I'm going to refloor the inside of the Chinese with chiseled quartz. Just because I feel as though that adds a little bit more flavor than just regular quartz or. Really, I don't even want to use oak wood for some reason. It just feels as though the, the white. The chiseled quartz seems to go nicely, and I quite like the pattern. It just seems to fit the theme here to me. But of course, do feel free to change this out for whatever you would like. Whilst we're at it, although we'll be coming back to this a little bit later, destroy the two rows in front of your Chinese like this, and we can refloor that in a bit. So, the next thing that we're going to do is an... As a matter of fact, I'm, I am jumping the gun a little bit with this, ladies and gentlemen, because I was going to do this a little bit later, but let's do a little bit of interior for our Chinese, and then we can move on a bit. So, inside of our Chinese takeaway, we want to have a staircase that runs along the back wall. So, we want to leave a gap of one, and then we're going to use bricks to create a separation. We're going to place bricks extending from the right here, leaving a gap of three on the left. The first two gaps, which are these ones of course, are going to be double doors, and the final gap here is just going to be occupied with a brick. Now, we're going to have a row of red concrete extending from that brick forwards along here to create a bit of a counter. In addition to that, we're going to have red concrete in front of this wall here as well. And we're going to leave a gap of one and we're going to have another row of red concrete extending forwards in front of it. Now, the wall behind here is a little bit different. So, on top of the bricks that we have here, I'm going to place two smooth quartz on the left and right sides extending upwards. And then I want to place two rows of yellow concrete, like this. So, for the rest of the area, if you like, you can place some smooth quartz extending left and above the door, just like this. And when it comes to the front area here, um, I doubt you can do this anymore if you know everything that's going on, but um, a little seating area. And all we have to do is just place a red concrete here. So from this corner, we want to leave a gap of two, 
little single red concrete here. Um, then we're actually going to have another two and then we're going to destroy the two blocks in the floor here Which we will have to make room for something else But just as a little bit of a floor plan Hopefully this isn't too weird that we're doing part of the interior as we're doing the building This is what we want to have Anyway, now that we have done that, and trust me, that's going to make things a lot easier for us a little bit later on We can continue with the rest of the build So Left and right of the actual main entrance, I want you to stack two rows of quartz. One, two, one, two, like this. Glass block above the door. On the left side of the left assistus row of quartz, I want you to place two smooth quartz, like this. Right of this row of quartz that we have here, I want you to place five rows of glass. So basically, one, two, three, four, five, leading all the way to this right side here. You can stick smooth quartz on the end and then extend this up as high as the smooth quartz that we have over there on the left. We want to make the window two rows high, so of course we've already got our one row. And then in between these two rows of smooth quartz, I want you to place two rows of yellow concrete. So it wants to look a little something like this. I want to have windows as well on these sides of the build. The windows are basically on the right and left side, and it's where we have this row of red along the back, and also just inside here. So it's going to be a two by two little layer of glass here on this side, and a two by two layer of glass here on this side. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I'm going to place smooth quartz block everywhere else, to make up the walls. So all along top of the brickwork that we have at the base, we're going to build it all up using smooth quartz and it's going to come as high as the sign that we have on the front of the building. So the smooth quartz is relevant because it's like the lower half of the build, so we're getting all of this placed before we move on to the second half of the build, the upper half of the build. So we'll have all of this here, so that's looking pretty good. And then, I, I'm hoping that this doesn't cause any problems later on, but I'm going to place a row of red concrete all the way around on top of the bottom of the frame of the build. Then we're going to extend on the front of the build, it's a little bit different you see, so on the right side here I want you to extend that first block forwards, two upside down stone brick stairs to the left, and red concrete extending all the way over to the left. On the back of the build we don't have any such windows, we just have an entire row of, you know what we could actually though, we have an entire row of red concrete, but you could actually have the same window because it wouldn't get in the way of anything if you wanted to. Um, the window, as you might imagine, is going to be two rows high. It's like all of the other windows, that's why I said that's why you might imagine. Um, we're going to place two rows of two glass paint with regular stone brick stairs on top. Now, when it comes to the rest of the build, so hang on a sec. <laughs> so bad. There we go. Uh, when it comes to the rest of it, I'm going to stick red concrete on top of the stairs and... That's about as high as the red concrete goes on the front and the back of the build. So what you can do is mark out just above where the windows are with red concrete. And then you can go all the way around the edge of this using your red concrete like so. And we can just kind of create like the top of the front of the build. So at this point, the build starts to um, apex on the left and right sides, meaning... Um, a that, that was the wrong term, really, to say they're apexes. But what we're going to do is we're going to create two um, pyramid shapes out of the left and right sides. We're going to um, basically just turn them into triangles. So once you've kind of, like, hit this point that you've got both the windows, you've kind of got, like, the upper part of the build complete. Um, the first set of stairs for the roof is going to sit on the front and back like this in front of the red concrete. So here. And here and then you can imagine that the next set of stairs is of course going to be above and inside like this 
So what that means is that we then need to create those, those two red concrete triangles like so, knowing that the stairs go here and here, and they will eventually hit an apex here, a double apex as I call it, back-to-back -back stairs, right up at the top. So we want to place this on the left and right. And it's getting to the point where we're probably going to have to grab a couple of different materials by the time we kind of like get to the top. But I do want to place all of these stone brick stairs. Um, the only place that you, well, that went badly. The only place that you don't really want to place these stone brick stairs, as I'm doing here, is you don't really want to place them at the very tippity top of this. So... Um, you also don't want, you don't need stairs all, like, on the right side here a little bit. So, when you eventually hit the top, like, you're on the front, you've placed all of the stairs on the top, right? Well, this kind of, like, 2 by 2 square at the top right side of the build, I want you to place bricks here instead of stone brick stairs. Fill the middle in here. And then we want to extend the bricks upwards a little bit. So... Um, maybe one row won't be sufficient, maybe two rows, that would be pretty sufficient, I think, that, that, that looks okay, I'm quite happy with that. So, the next thing is, I'm going to come to the back, I'm going to add all of the roof in here, and then we'll probably add all of the details of the roof in, so, it's, I, I, I don't want it to sound like it's like an insanely detailed roof or anything, but it's actually kind of cool, there's a couple of, um, I think it's more kind of like British architecture, really, um, I suppose. But um, it's quite uh, it's quite nice. It's kind of cool. It's quite homey feeling. Like this uh, this particular takeaway isn't based on like a a building specifically that uh, that you know like I, I frequent or what have you. But it's like it's. What would be the word? It's stereotypical. I don't want it to sound like that. Almost sounds like a bad thing, but um, it's sort of it, like this is like th this is. I, I don't know about different countries and what have you, but in Britain, your local Chinese takeaway might look a very very similarish to this. So um, I really like the design and style of the building. It's even got a little uh, apartment in the top of the building as well because uh, that's not uncommon whatsoever. Um, that's also where the kitchen is too, because I wanted to keep the the build a... Um, I, I didn't want to make it too long, so I've actually made a uh, the kitchen upstairs, which I, I don't know how difficult that is, but I, I thought that would be pretty cool. It's actually... Uh, th that's actually kind of um, similar to how um, one of these near me does it, um, so... It, I suppose it wouldn't be uncommon to, like, transport the food from upstairs to downstairs and just have, like, this as an entire reception area. So, this is what we want to have right here. It's looking pretty good. So, the next thing that we want to do is we want to... So, we've already got these stone brick stairs here on the right side. So, the next thing that we're going to do... Let's just put everything away. We'll, we'll probably have to grab some more stuff a little bit later on. But brick wall, light grey concrete, hopper, and um, I don't want to grab looms and stuff. We'll just leave it at that for, for a second. Um, although, we're probably we're going to have to fill the top of this in with something. So maybe we'll grab the red concrete and we'll just fill the very top of this in using, um, using some red concrete. Although, um, it'd be better served if this was like stone. So that might even be a bad choice. Like, it, it might be better for us if we... Um, have like red concrete on the sides um, so like here and then it might be better if we have some stone so on the very rare occasions that you'll actually see the top of the building like you know it uh, it might be a little bit better although it, again this is a very minor detail it probably doesn't even matter in the uh, in the slightest so here here perfect so all the way over here on the left side I'm going to place a uh, I'm going to place a light grey concrete. So this is on the front of the kind of like the double row that we have here up at the top. So I'm going to destroy underneath this and I'm going to have the light grey concrete extend all the way down until it is even and level with the red concrete here that we have on the side. Perfect. So I'm going to extend the light grey concrete up one, place a hopper on top, and, oh, I should really place a stone brick stair behind this. So, 
All the way up at the top here, we kind of have like this stylized brickwork um, made out of um, brick walls. So this is why it doesn't really matter what's underneath exactly, but it creates this pretty cool effect from uh, from the other side. I really like it. And something else that we can do with the brick wall as well is we can kind of like create a little bit of like uh, the top of the chimney up here too. I just think it makes the roof look really interesting and a little bit unique. I quite like it. So, now that we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing that we should probably do is we should work on the rest of the outside of the restaurant, of course. And um, we're going to grab ourselves some smooth stone, some lanterns, we'll need a loom, we'll need yellow banners, red banners, a flower charge, red dye, yellow dye, and this might be it for now. We'll probably need some more stuff, though, of course. So I'm going to place some smooth stone in front of the uh, in front of the Chinese like this, perfect. And then I'm going to place a lantern hanging down underneath the left and right sides of the red concrete area. Looks a little bit more inviting. And then I'm going to throw a loom down on the ground, crack it open. Ladies and gentlemen, the editing might have gotten a little bit weird there because I was trying to figure out exactly how to make the banner that I'm looking for, but I think I've figured it out. So we're going to crack open the loom and we are going to place a red banner in the loom, just like this. We're going to chase it up with some yellow dye. And that is the first thing that we want to have. We want to have a yellow border around the banner. Place the flower in the center, so with the flower charge pattern, grab that, grab your red banner, boom, perfect. So that's the first thing that I want to make. This is kind of just like a stylized, um, this is just like a stylized banner. I'm going to place it on the left and right sides of where the sign is going to go for the takeaway. So this is where it's going to be, right in the middle row like this, the middle two rows. Also, on the inside of the Chinese too, I kind of want to add uh, just a little banner here as well. So just like connects to where the window would be. And uh, now that I've done that, we have a lot more banners to make. It is going to get a little bit crazy. So the first word that we want to write is going to be Chinese. Unfortunately, I just placed all of those in the loom. Um, so we're going to grab a brand new fresh red banner. We're going to place it in the loom. I'm going to carefully get rid of all of this and we're going to place some yellow dye in the loom as well. So the first letter is going to be C. So that is going to be a horizontal row of yellow dye across the top of the banner. Vertical row on the left, horizontal across the bottom. And there we have C. Next letter is going to be H. So that's a brand new banner. Vertical row of yellow on the left, right, and then straight through the middle like that. Next, we're going to make an I. So that's going to be a vertical row of yellow straight up the middle. Boom. Next, we're going to make an N. So that's going to be a vertical row of die on the left, vertical row of die on the right, and a diagonal row top left corner to bottom right corner. We're then going to grab another banner. We're going to place it in there, and the next letter is E. So that's quite easy to make. It's a horizontal row straight through the middle, vertical row on the left, horizontal row along the bottom, and a horizontal row along the top as well. So just like that, boom, E. Next would be S, so horizontal row along the top, horizontal row along the bottom, and then a diagonal row, top left corner to bottom right corner, boom. There we have Chinese. But luckily, we can reuse the E. So in between here, the two banners, we want to place C-H-I-N-E-S. And then, then we have Chinese. However, if we add the E, boom, Chinese. And then we can... Get, I, I want to say, actually, we can't get rid of the yellow dye because we need it, but we can get rid of all these. And then we can crack open the loom and we can write the next uh, the next word, which is going to be takeaway. So that's going to be a brand new yellow banner in the loom. We're going to throw some red dye in there. And the first letter is T. So a vertical row of red straight up the middle and a horizontal row of red along the top. Boom, T. 
The next letter is going to be A, and a horizontal row along the top will do. Vertical row on the left, vertical row on the right, and a horizontal straight through the middle. Boom! A. We'll be reusing that quite a few times. Then, if that's K, we're going to make K. We want to place a vertical row on the left, and then two diagonal rows. One bottom left corner to top left corner, and one bottom left corner to top right corner. Or however that is said correctly. I feel as though that I messed that up, but you guys get the idea. Brand new yellow banner in the loom, and we want to make E. That's something that we've done already, so horizontal rows at the bottom, middle, and top, and then a single vertical row all the way on the left side will make E. Once again, EZ. The next letter would be A. We've already made that. However, the letter after that is W, which is not something that we've made yet. So, red die, and then we do this like triangle at the bottom of the banner. We grab that, put it back in, get rid of the red, throw the yellow in, and then we do the, like the bottom set of teeth. That's what it looks like to me, like a bottom and an upper set of teeth. And then we grab that, put it back in, get rid of the yellow, grab the red, put that back in, and then just a vertical row of red on the left and right sides for the W. <laughs> and that's how we get the W. Next would be A again. However, I'm going to grab the yellow banner and we have to, sorry, put in the yellow banner in there with the red die to make Y. So, you start off with a top left to bottom right corner row of red. Grab that, chuck the red die out, put the yellow die in, make the lower half of the banner yellow. Grab that, chuck that in, get rid of the yellow die. Chuck the red die back in there, and then you do the opposite diagonal. So top right corner to bottom left corner, boom. And then we have a take we take you we <laughs> We need to reuse some of these letters. So so we now want to take our banners, and we don't want to start all the way over here on the left, just like I might have accidentally done and had to edit out. We want to move one row inwards. <laughs> That's literally what happened. And place a T, A, K, E, A, W, A, Y. Perfect. And I really love how that looks. That is perfect. That's literally how the branding looks on a lot of the Chinese takeaways around me. Obviously, not the same everywhere, but hopefully this is... Uh, I'm hoping that this is a little bit more universal than to where I live. So uh, this is uh, this is what the outside of your build should look like. I'm really, really happy with this. The next thing that we're going to do is head on inside. So we don't have a lot of the materials that we actually need to make the build, but um, we actually, I can get rid of all of these banners actually and all of the, uh, the banner making supplies. So we don't have a lot of what we need to detail the build, but we do have uh, things that we need to actually like structure the inside. So we'll need stuff like um, yellow concrete, red concrete, sea lanterns, oak planks. We'll need smooth quartz stairs, weighted pressure plates. We'll need oak trap doors. We'll leave it at that for a second. So the th there's like two floor levels to the inside of the Chinese. So number one, I want to add just an entire row of yellow concrete on top of this back wall here. And then I'm going to extend the row of yellow concrete forwards towards the, the front of our building, just like this. So this is going to be kind of like um, the ceiling to the front part of, uh, of our takeaway. I want to use sea lanterns to create a little bit of light inside here, so um, it's kind of up to you how you want to structure the light, but there's like two rows in front and two rows in the back if you find the two middle rows, and I believe that if you leave a gap of two on the right and a gap of two on the left, then... Oh, my bad, I, I placed that slightly incorrectly, but if you place it in the middle, like, you, you can evenly have a 2x2 two two square of sea lanterns that are 2x2 two two from the wall, 2x2 two two from each other, and 2x2 two two from pretty much everywhere, like, if you place them in such a way as that. 
The reason that I have smooth quartz stairs is twofold. Number one, I want to create a cash register with a weighted pressure plate to the side. I don't know why, they just seem to go together. And then I want to place double oak trap doors here, just left of the cash register to have a separation between um, the counter space and the living space and stuff and everybody else. So, I want to also create a staircase. So this is behind the double doors here. We're going to place a set of stairs. So this is going to be smooth quartz stairs leading all the way up. Now, the smooth quartz stairs are going to come all the way but two blocks from the top. The reason being is because on top of the yellow concrete, I'm going to have a layer of oak planks. Now, I think it would look a little insane if the floor had yellow concrete and sea lanterns in it meaning the interior floor for the for like the actual like apartment living space up here so i've changed it um I'm, i would need to create a couple of walls up here as well so there's going to be a long wall opposite the staircase here so leading up to where the staircase is here and i might actually destroy the row of oak planks and i might replace it using um yellow concrete here so it kind of like blends into the wall a bit better there's going to be a double door here as well so kind of like leading you into the kitchen slash apartment um, I'm going to also fill in this wall as well. So the wall, the back wall of the restaurant here where we kind of have this um, this window and such, like this is going to, uh, this is all just going to be built up and made red and smooth. Same thing's going to happen here as well. I want to say the same thing's going to happen. Let me actually check that. Yeah, the same thing's actually going to happen here as well. So it's... <laughs> It's actually kind of up to you because I'm, I'm actually not 100% certain on what I like. You see, you can destroy this red wall here, yeah? And you can turn it into bricks. So you can destroy the bottom and you can turn this wall into bricks. By the way, you could have done that with the back wall as well, but I actually for forgot that, sort of. So you can have, like, red on both sides here, and then this back wall here could be bricks. It doesn't matter as much because it's almost separate from the apartment, but, you know, it's, it's something that you, uh, you might want to consider. Inside the the apartment there's three rows of space so that'd be like one two and three here yeah and that means that the ceiling would be in the fourth row so i'm going to make the wall here four rows high next to where we have this door i'm going to box the top of the door in using bricks and then you get to decide what you want to have as a ceiling would you like to have red concrete would you like more bricks would you like some you could even go a lot you, you could even use chiseled quartz block you know there's there's a lot of choice really i mean i i i i i i i i'm thinking that <laughs> i don't know why i said that i'm thinking that chiseled quartz block could be a good ceiling because it's actually it's, it's very cramped in here and especially the kind of like the living area not only the kitchen but the living area is going over here as well and it would be quite uh, quite nice to have a little bit of a brighter ceiling feel free to change it so the next thing that we're going to do in here is we're kind of going to lay out the structure of the room a bit. So I'm going to get rid of the trap door and grab light grey concrete. And along the front wall here, I'm going to place three, one, two, three light grey concrete extending right. Gap of three, one, two, three, this fourth block here, brick, extend forwards one. Double door, single door, just like that. Single door. And then another row of brick blocks extending back. Brick up this wall. Just like this. And then on the inside of this wall here, so where we have this door here, we're going to have it's so by the way, it's such a tiny bathroom. But it's we're going to brick up this wall here. There's gonna be a door here on the left, and then this wants to be completely bricked up. Like this isn't a tiny apartment, but it is what it is. Um, let's add a sea lantern to the ceiling. We can actually add it right in the middle, just like this. That's perfect. And basically, we've just got enough room for a bed and a chest and an armor stand. Like, there's not much room, I'll be honest with you, inside of this tiny little room. And um, even less so in the bathroom. This is a bathroom, by the way. A couple of smooth quartz stairs here. <laughs> this, all, this, this is going to make a bath. And then we're going to have a toilet against this wall. Now, the toilet is going to utilize an oak trap door here, like this. And then we're going to have just a little bit of light 
just in the ceiling here. Very, very small. You, you probably wouldn't want to live here with more than one person, probably not even by yourself either, to be quite honest. Inside of what I'm going to refer to as the kitchen area, you can create a little bit of a, a ceiling light. So you can just have like a light directly in the middle of the ceiling, or perhaps you want to kind of like space it out a little bit. Maybe something like this. It's kind of up to you how you want to um, artistically like sort out the lighting. I like sea lantern. You could just use lanterns and stuff. Um, you could use like end rods and you could make like a realistic hanging um, sort of light fixture. But you know, it's again, that's, that's sort of up to you. Um, above here, which is where the cooker area is going to be, I'm going to have an extractor fan, which is going to be um, two quartz stairs here, placed just above this. This is going to be a, a cooker, by the way. Um, I'm going to extend these light grey concretes here forwards a little bit, so that's going to be one, two, and three, extending towards the door. Then here on this opposite side, gap of one, light grey concrete, gap of one, light grey concrete, just like this. And then that's kind of how we're going to leave upstairs at the moment. Now, there are some more things that we can place up here if we wanted to, like item frames and lanterns. So, like, we could have a lantern here for a bit more light. You could have a lantern over here if you wanted to as well. Um, you can place la uh, item frames to represent things that are going to be on countertops and units. Same thing could be done over here. You know, it's, it's kind of up to you. You can, you can do this literally everywhere. However, we'll probably tackle that more so as we progress through the build. Downstairs, however, I think that... Oh, and also, we might also want to kind of like... Um, here, what do we want to do with this? If we use some oak planks, maybe we can kind of like blend this into the floor a little bit. Or maybe, like if we, we create a box using some brick here, and will that do? Huh. That looks a little bit weird for my liking, so I'm thinking that we'll just use brick. My bad. Wait. Here. Here. So where this brick wall starts, we'll probably just create, like, here. So, d does that make sense? So we, we have three rows that we can kind of, like, um... So we've got, like, three rows gap that we can, like, walk down. We just want kind of, like, this false brick wall here. Um, we'll have a row of brick just up above our heads as well, just to kind of, like, box this area in. And then that looks fine. I think that that's actually perfect. So... Um, leading us down into here, we do actually have some materials that we need. Um, we actually have them on us. So, this is mainly going to be... We're going to be using a lot of signs and um, item frames. So... Along the back here would be advertisements for menu items. So, if you want to, you can write out in signs, say, Chow Main, and you can... I'll, I'll do one, like, Chow Main. Um, you'd probably want to specify, like, what flavour the Chow Main would be. You know, pork, um, beef, or, you know, whatever, whatever you would like. So, Chow Main. And then, next to that, you would want to place an item frame with something that resembled Chow Main. I actually have a decent idea for that, sort of. Um, and you're going to want to have a few of these. It's up to you whether you want... My bad. It's up to you whether you want to entitle these, but I'm only... In, I'd, you know, I'm only go just going to place the sign. I don't actually want to write in them. Um, to the right of this, I'm going to have more advertisements in the form of signs, and then to the right of these, um, a little 2x2 two two square of item frames. I want a lantern on this corner here, in the on this counter, with a couple of item frames. We're going to have some uh, some menus. All the way over here on this side, we're going to have a little bit more menu items as well. So, um, just a couple of signs with some item frames to the right. Believe it or not, that is all we can do with all the materials that we have. So, I'm going to get rid of these, and I'm going to grab a lot of decorative materials. And I'll show you what the materials are before we use them. Um, I don't know if I'm going to create an item list out of them, because a lot of them, depending upon if you're going to be playing in survival or not, might not be that accessible. But give me a second to gather everything that we need, and then we can get cracking. Alright, I think I've gathered everything that we need, but as, as usual, you know, uh, I'm probably wrong. So, here's what we're going to start off with. We need sand, bamboo, warm tra trapdoors, any trapdoors will do, crimson stairs, flower parts, paper, painting, yellow sugar box, and some horn coral specifically that yellow coral. So, wheat would actually be a good use for this as well. I'll explain what, what horn coral is when we get to it, but feel free to substitute any and all of these materials for different things. I'll explain their purpose as we're doing it. So, first of all, we're going to use sand 
To plant ourselves some bamboo, this is going to be directly to the right of the door here. We're going to place some warped trapdoors on the right and in front of where we've just placed the sand. And we're going to build up the bamboo like this. To the left of this, there's going to be a seating area that's made using crimson stairs or any stairs. And then we're going to just have two by two seats. And then I might even like flare this one to the right here. And I might also flare this one outwards as well, just so it looks a little bit better. Um, the flower parts are basically for decoration. So one here would do and one here would do in between the seats. And I like bamboo in there. It just makes sense and it really looks nice. I completely forgot you could even place bamboo in flower parts. I really like it as a decoration. Um, what is the paper for? These are menus, so this is just going to be placed here and these two item frames menus are typically off to the side. And I want to place some one by one paintings just above where we have um, this little area here and I think that that just looks like a nice little decoration. What is the yellow shulker box? Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a far fetch, but you know takeaway bags like delivery dri drivers with takeaway bags? Um, this sort of reminds me of this a little bit, quite honestly. Um, so that, that, that's all where it is. In, in my mind, it's kind of like a delivery bag. You know, you feel free to imagine whatever you might want it to look at. You can have it there, you can have it along the back here, wherever. Okay, horn coral, the yellow stuff. I think it sort of looks like noodles, aka chow mein, sort of. I think wheat might also be good, but you know, it, it's up to you. I think that that looks sort of like noodles, which kind of puts me onto all of the rest of these food items. Cooked pork chop, cooked cod, beef, carrot, and some beetroot stew. They just look like menu items, so pork chop, the cod, all of these just look like menu items, so that's why I've placed them in here. They're all different from each other, they're all colourful, and I'd recommend using a couple of them as well over here too. So I really like it. I think that the down Downstairs now is quite sufficiently decorated. Very, very happy with the vibe. Um, hopefully you guys are too. I really love it. So, moving upstairs is going to be a little bit different. So, up here, I, feel free to like place stuff around here. But I, I feel as though that this the corridor is not really nicely decorated. It doesn't have to be. It's just like a place to go from one to another. And this is the kitchen. So, the kitchen, in my mind, being kind of like a little professional environment. Um, what do we need up here? What are we going to be using? So... We're going to need some iron blocks, block of iron rather, buttons, light grey shulker boxes, iron trap doors. Um, we're going to need cauldron, rail, blast furnace, perhaps some truck wire hooks. And let's... Oh, we'll need iron swords, oddly enough, as well. So, where we have these extractor fans, as I called them earlier, we're going to have a couple of blast furnaces underneath. You can even place, like, a rail on one if you like. To the left of this, cauldron, and this, I'm thinking this is kind of like a f deep fat fryer or, you know, a, a just a fryer, whatever you want to call it really, here with the rails on top. Um, I'm thinking that we kind of need a sink, so I, I've actually not accounted for this, so maybe like a cauldron here over on the left, like destroy one of the light grey boxes, uh, one of the light grey concretes rather, and then we can place a truck by hook, looks a little bit like a sink. Um, we can have a couple of buttons here, um, just to kind of look like units or cabinets. We can have light grey shulker boxes above here as well to actually use them as storage. Um, above here as well, so like where we have the extractor fan, I was thinking, I don't know if you can do this for sure, so we might have to swap these. I was thinking some item frames hanging off of the iron trap door, so we don't have item frames on us, unfortunately, I forgot about them. Um, can you place them on trap doors? Yes, you can. The trapdoors would probably have to be higher for them to look not as goofy. So here, and then um, get the item frames back. Will they Will they hang off of here? Hang on. Yeah, they will. Okay, but I'd, I'd, you know what? Slabs will probably look better. Um, unless, unless we can then place once more the uh, iron trapdoors underneath. Maybe here. Kind of look like hanging like units or so I don't know but the point of the matter is I kind of wanted to have like knives or something kind of like suspended on the ceiling um, I thought they'd look pretty cool you know feel free to manage that however you would like over here on this wall couple of blocks of iron over here in the corner buttons that to me looks like a fridge um, in between here block of iron um, button 
uh, iron trap door on there. That looks like um, kind of like a freezer, like a chest freezer or something similar. In the middle of the floor, I'm just going to put some yellow carpet, just because it fits the vibe. We've got like a lot. Of, we've got a little bit of red uh, in here, so I figure a little bit of yellow kind of just like evens it out. And then this kind of feels like a kitchen to me. I mean, I, I don't know what else I might add. If you wanted to add decoration, you could. Well, I mean, you could. I wish I had stopped getting rid of item frames. You can use item frames, and um, it makes sense that you would have like. Um, in these like paper so like people's food orders so like it's not you might have them written down and then you'd obviously be working along them for like you might have them here although that'd be dangerous above a cooker but do you, you know you, you might have seen it in movies and stuff that uh, it makes sense that you'd have like um the the order on there um maybe some um ingredients and stuff kind of like littered around probably not r raw raw cooked meat but <laughs> you know maybe maybe some soups and stuff you could definitely put uh, put here there and everywhere um we could have some um, painting. Uh, mm, hang on. E. I'll, I'll leave it there, but I don't quite like it clipping into the button. So we could have some paintings on the wall. We could have um, same thing here if we wanted to. Maybe just like a painting. Uh, you know what? Sometimes Minecraft really does bother me. Okay, we'll just leave that there too. Um, some paintings on the wall, just kind of like liven it up around here if we wanted to. And I'm quite happy with this. Like it feels like a a uh, a little kitchen. So moving on into here, this is possibly one of the more depressing bedrooms. I actually had a bedroom similar to this growing up. It was just very small, like you couldn't get too much in it. So um, pretty much just like a bed in here, um, like a double chest over here on the side or perhaps a single chest. And um, if you wanted to, you could have like an armor stand. So just kind of like here in the corner. And then there's not really too much room for much else. So like if you wanted to, um, you could improvise. You could have like a couple of um, uh, a couple of shelves using some trapdoors that you've got about. You could have like a painting on the wall to make it a little bit less tragic. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I th this is literally like sort of like what I like for for a good ten years of my life. Just a, a very very tiny bedroom, not too much, uh, not too much other than like a bed and like a wardrobe and some stuff like sprinkled about the place like it's you know it's, yeah it's, it's not too bad I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys had a, had a little similar deal going on hopefully you're a bit more fortunate than I was but you know something like this is just fine and then um, if we have kind of like uh, a trip by hook this is a bath by the way with like a flower pot here and then if we place a cauldron we have made ourselves a little bath <laughs> Maybe if you if you don't want to have it as a bath, maybe you can have like you can have the tripwire hook, and then maybe like oh an iron trap door here kind of looks like a shower head, so it kind of like controls in a shower head. If you want to, however you want to make that look, and then this would be in a toilet, obviously. I don't know where one would wash their hands. I suppose you'd have to have what <laughs> you wash your hands either in the toilet or the bath, or maybe like just out here where we have the sink. And, um, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we've, we've kind of sort of made the whole thing now. So this is what your Chinese takeaway will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one, and hopefully this isn't just like a UK slash British thing. Hopefully you guys uh, have something like this um, similar where you live as well. Like, I really love this. Like, I love Chinese food. Um, it's like this. I really, really enjoyed building and designing designing this like this this was awesome for me i really enjoyed it and hopefully um hopefully it shows a little bit but um hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as well if you have please do remember to hit that like button it would really help me in the channel out very very much if you're new around here please do consider subscribing and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button um that'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box and if you would like to make anything else by me, check out the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section for more. Specifically, the City Builds playlist is going to get lit up this year. So, um, if you want to build a city, if you're building a city, if you like the sort of stuff, you're definitely going to want to check that out. Keep an eye on it. New stuff added every single week, hopefully multiple times a week um, as the year progresses. Um, but thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much. I really do hope that you enjoyed this. I know that I've said that five times now. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Good. Bye.